How's it going everybody? I want to talk a little bit about Jormungand slum today. In the rework video I've used the adjective naked to describe it, since a lot of his old properties got removed from it. And I think I might have done my own argument a disservice here. I did a poor job explaining it further. Because the bash and the slam come together, so we should look at it through that lens. Well, let me just highlight this by showing you how just a slight change in wording can change the perception here. So forget that I'm talking about the slam for a second. For what it's worth, I'm just explaining a random attack to you. Imagine a blockable attack that takes a full second to perform and pins afterwards. It cannot be fainted, but does 30 damage when it lands. It has no additional properties, meaning no hyper armor, no undodgeable, no unblockable or anything. So when you hear this, you think, well, the damage is quite high, but otherwise, why would that ever land? Everyone can react to it. Which makes the requirement of only being allowed to use or knock down opponents redundant, as it would never land anyways. I mean, I guess we're ignoring the gank angle here, but oh well. But in that light, people would obviously assume it is pretty bad. And sadly, I've left it at that in my previous video as well, after I've pointed out that it will most likely always get peeled in teamfights, which makes it unusable outside of 1v1 situations. But is that actually the case? Are there upsides to actually going for the slam despite the high chance of not landing it? I'll get into teamfight coordination in just a second, but there's one thing we like to ignore very often. I've pointed out the T1 feed in the other video, but Yorm has a feed solely dedicated to the slam that gives him a 40 HP shield each time it lands. And that feed is one of the biggest offenders when it comes to the revenge shield bug. You do get lots of knockdowns when you are in revenge. You no longer have to solely rely on the in-chain dash. So that is a massive component and also one of the reasons why many people always mention George as one of the best stallers. If you fight people that continuously feed you revenge and let you proc the tier 2 feat, then the character is indeed almost unkillable. And since it is sadly a not so uncommon occurrence in normal matchmaking, the slam itself gains a lot of value from it. We could even go further into more detail here with the last stand perk and the hard to kill feat as options for Yorm. All these further increase the value of the shield and thus the value of the move. By how much is debatable since the perk is regarded as insanely broken, but the feat is not picked very often. But it's hard to argue against both certainly having an impact. With all that said, meaning the move has its clear up and downsides, but the downside of being easily peelable allows it to also bait opponents. I've shown you that you can also zone attack when you knock someone down with the bash. The bash itself acts as a chain starter, so you have access to your fully armored in chain zone. And that one, well, that does 24 damage. 24 is the same that Valkyrie, Shaolin, and TND get on their knockdown moves. All these special follow up moves do considerably less damage than Yom Slam. Only Centurion's Eagle's Talons is comparable. They are harder to peel since they are much faster but they're just as telegraphed otherwise, and without the option to get them on every single knockdown. See, my point is that the 24 damage from the in-chain zone is actually really good. Yorm benefits from knockdowns, not solely because he has this special slam move, but also because it is putting opponents around him in a mix-up. Do they go for the interrupt and risk eating 24 damage because the Yorm expected it? Or will the Yorm go for the slam because of all the other upsides that I've listed before, and not just the damage? Sacrificing 6 damage for extra safety and the possibility to deal 24 damage to multiple people, well, I don't think that is a bad deal. Uh, in no way is he in an unfavorable position after a chain bash knocked an opponent down. So don't look at moves in a vacuum. There are many other factors to consider and giving the slam additional properties might actually totally overload the move. That is why you also might see some people argue that the bash is actually on the stronger side. Punishability with guard breaks is always a point of contention, but guard breaking in teamfights is also not really feasible. The move is in a weird position, where it, on the one hand, offers quite a lot, but is also severely lacking in other aspects. That's what makes arguing about its strength quite complicated. 
But it is really important to look at the whole picture here and not single out only one point of contention. That is pretty much all I wanted to explain here in this video. I hope I did a better job than in the rework video. Please let me know. For now, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Later, everybody.